It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with TGIF. Of course, we're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea. What's up, Al? And what's hey. up, Funky? Hello. What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. What's up, Claudia? Hey, Al. Hey, Funky. Y'all good? <laughs> are Where we all we? back in the States? I guess I'm back in the States. Yeah, you Claudia, you're back home? home? I'm home. Mm -hmm. Finally okay. back home. And yeah, you're back from Mexico. Q, and you're I, and I've been I've been home for a while. So yeah. <laughs> so guys, today I gave my final in my class. So I finished my first semester as a professor at Bowie State University. I want to thank Dr. Tarodros, my chairman of my department, as well as Dr. Amina Bro, who is the president of Bowie State, for giving me this opportunity. It was phenomenal, a great set of kids. I'm really looking forward to seeing them do big things in the fine arts space as entrepreneurs. So I wanna tilt my hat to my class. And also I have to thank my Fox 5 DC family. They always put me on when I'm back in the DC area. I wanna give a shout out to executive producer, Jeff, and also the five-time Emmy Award winning Chanel for always producing a segment for me when I'm back. And I got to work with the lovely Marissa and Steven Graddick who are, well, Marissa's been there a couple of years, but Steven is kind of new to the Fox 5 team there. It's just always great to work with black male and female professionals. Head off to you guys, and thank you for the opportunity this morning. All right, all right. And Funky, how you doing today? Did, did this thing just really use the whole top of our show to run the church announcement? <laughs> he making sure he got another job over there. That's all he did. Yeah, we I don't even know them damn people. Vivian and Gloria and <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got to keep my jobs. <laughs> I ain't do nothing this weekend, child. I went down to the bar with a Honda Cosby. <laughs> got drunk with Miss Kenny. But my usual, y'all saw, I finally got some groceries because I'm I'm stopping with the door dashes and the Uber Eats. I've been doing like $60 to $80 a day on that. I got me a good, good $500 worth of groceries in here. So y'all stay tuned to my Instagram to see what all type of TikTok recipes I'll be making starting tonight. I saw Funky, that was outrageous. The 200 bags you had sitting outside of your door. <laughs> like, seriously, you could feed that whole community that you live in with all those dago groceries. <laughs> I saw it was like 500 bucks. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's expensive. I mean, I'm, everything's just up right now. So um, I'll be in DC, Al, but I'll miss you. I'll be there on Thursday. So uh, I'll be out there. So maybe I need to go uh -huh. see the Fox 5 family and say hello to them while I'm in town. You should uh, say hello. And plus, isn't Oprah going to be here Thursday? The White House hol holiday party. So that's what I'm going for. So maybe. Got it. Well, I think well, how the hell here. you get an invitation and we ain't get one? <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask? Yeah, shit. We want to go. I want to go be ghetto at the White House. That's exactly why you're not invited. <laughs> that's exactly why you're not invited. You what, would you, what would you do at the White House? You listen know, to sexy red, red bitch. bitch. Listen to sexy red and walk around like sexy. <laughs> I want to get my coochie scratched. White House people, thank you for the invite and you did right. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, we got some comments. St. Sin Qu Quent said, I would love to take a class with Professor Al Reynolds. Brave G Nebo said, uh, Al, your resume must look like a college dis dissertation. <laughs> and that girl Q, uh, said, Q, did you go to Art Basel? No, I stayed Basel. completely away from the Art Basel traffic. Everybody and their mama is in town, all types of parties. Queen Latifah was in the script club with Janelle Monet. Everybody's in town, but I shy clear all that traffic this weekend. And someone was trying to be shady in the chat home. They said, Funky, and I came up on some food stamps. And then, <laughs> Angel White, Funky, and I came up on some food stamps. <laughs> Why are you playing? I would not be embarrassed. Now, I, when I was little, I didn't like them, but I'll use them now. Mm -hmm. I do, too. All right, let's get into the show. We have a lot to talk about. We have a Hollywood breakup alert. All right, Cardi B announced on social media that she is no longer in a relationship with Offset. Check this out. I, I've been single for a minute now, but I have been afraid to, like, I'm not afraid. I just don't know how, like, to tell the world. But I feel like today has been, like, a sign. Like, I've been, the last time I got on live, I kind of wanted you guys to tell you. I kind of wanted to tell you guys, but I didn't know how to tell you. So I was like, I changed my mind. But it has been like this for a minute now. All right, are you guys surprised? Uh, Q, let's go to you first. Some people's not single. Let me tell you something. I ain't believing nothing coming out of her or offset mouth. 
until they put that house up for sale. That's how you know people serious. Or until I see pictures of a moving truck, moving somebody's stuff out of their place, they still together. All right. Al, what do you think? Well, in their case, because they're always on again, off again. We talked about this that this morning on Celebrity Dish. But let me tell you this. Um, you know, I said last week when, when we talked about, uh, you know, the, the noise and her being really quiet, we see now that this is the reason why she was quiet. She was trying to figure out if she should tell us that they were broke up or not. But this is one thing that I do know and not worried about. Their kids are going to be just fine. We know Cardi B is an incredible mother, and we know that Offset is a good dad. We've never heard. He got four other kids outside of her, and we've never heard anything bad from those baby mamas talking about Offset has ignored or has not taken his responsibilities lightly. So I'm super excited that this co-parenting thing is going to be good for them. I haven't given up on them yet because I do think that they will definitely be back together soon but you know the real tea is and i'm messy and i told claudia and our producer today i want to know i want to know though if krishan really did sleep with offset that's what i want to know that's the tea of the day for me because these these two right here i think they're gonna be fine I hope so. I think Cardi B definitely takes the marriage more seriously than Offset. And it's sad because I think she really does try to make a go of it. And it's sad if you're in a relationship and one is it's unbalanced, which happens all too often where it's unbalanced. So I just I wish her well. She looked really hurt in that video. She sounded hurt. So I, I hope for her mental health that she gets what she wants. And if they don't get back together, I think she will be working real hard on her music for next year. She said she got distracted with this marriage. And our music is uh, taking a back seat. All right. Speaking of uh, other musicians, Tamar Braxton set the internet on fire after she opened up about getting her man back from Tommy Lee. Check this out. And I know y'all lying. If y'all thought I was gonna let my man go because he took some crackhead to a basketball game. <laughs> All right, now Tommy wasn't too fond of Tamar's comments, but uh, seems to have taken a positive route by focusing the attention on Jeremy Robinson, which is the man in the middle. Take a look. But we're two black girls letting this, this, I'm not even gonna say the race or whatever, play with us. Like, tighten up. Tighten up, my girl. I'm not your issue. That's your issue. And sleeping with people like that and trusting them, this be the problem. All right, what are your thoughts on this drama, Al? Let's go to you first. <laughs> I love this drama. And I am not going to sit here and pretend like I didn't hear what Tommy Lee said. Now, y'all probably don't want to play it on production, but she said he ate her butt and she sent him on his way. I love that drama. And I ain't going to lie, I wanted to gargle for Tamar. All I could see in my head was butt and feces and saliva and STDs. But good for Tamar, good for Tamar. She set the record straight and she said that she's the winner in the end because she got her man back. And good for you, Tamar. But I'm gonna tell you what, and this is just being honest. Can we please just get this relationship? I don't wanna hear anything else about Tamar and her boyfriend, Jonathan, after 2023 come to a close. So Tamar and Jonathan, y'all got 20 more days to play on the internet. But you guys are one of the few couples that I would like for you to take us out of the uh, to take us out of the chat because at this point, what else is there that we need to know? You don't put the girl with a whole new dude with Jonathan is Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy, whoever <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. I know, but it's too easy to start new rumors, so we all make sure. <laughs> uh, Q, what do you think about this? Do y'all remember that famous line from Poetic Justice? Every time you kiss him, you just, you just remember this. You're getting a taste of my pussy. You remember that? <laughs> In the beauty salon, that was all I could think about when Tommy was saying that. Um, I don't want my singers, especially my singers who come from like legendary, iconic singing families to be arguing with love and hip hop people. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't, I just, I just don't. It's it's not a good look for anybody. Um, but I do like the approach that Tommy took. You know what I'm saying? I do like the approach that Tommy took because the truth of the matter is, it is Jeremy. And Jeremy has since come forth and apologized for, you know, embarrassing Tamar or whatever the case may be. 
like I said, Tamar and Jeremy's relationship, really none of our business. I really don't give a damn what they do. Just keep us out the group chat. Tommy Lee alleges Jeremy told her he kicked Tamar out of the house after they broke up and that her tour was not sold out. Um, and Jeremy that he ate her ass. <laughs> you, can't, you can't forget she said he ate her ass and then told Tamar to like, give him a kiss. <laughs> Jeremy Robinson's post as a man... <laughs> I stand on being accountable. I never should have gone out with that lady. I never should have had conversations with her. I regret all of it. I should have never done that to Tamar. That's and I never should have ate her ass. <laughs> <laughs> I should have never ate her ass and then went to Tamar house and kissed her in the mouth. He didn't address that. And Tamar, I would be very, I would be. You see would, how these men will embarrass you? I know. You see how these men embarrass you? Yes, like, yeah, could you imagine you'll be walking through the grocery store and it's a group of women standing over there <laughs> the uh, laughing at you because you standing next to a man that don't ain't they ass and they just laughing. These men will embarrass you in these streets, honey. They will embarrass you. Oh, boy. The Idiva said Tommy's receipts were juicy. JR was thirsty after one compliment. And Tadisha Ashley says life has whooped Tamar's ass. He's passed six or seven years, she really needs to go heal and be intentional about it. JR is by no means a prize. I would have a real hard time trusting this man after with one date with another woman. You ate her butt, like y'all said. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, I mean, of course that's disgusting, but I would be really concerned about you done told all my business to the ops the first time you got gone out with someone. But the you know what? Now that I think about something, Tommy probably lying. They went on one day and you pulled your panties down and he just ate your booty. And they that's, be doing that kill. Come right. on. <laughs> and he and that and that's all he did. Like he like so if he ate your booty, he hunched you. I refuse to believe you just pulled your pants down and bent over. He just ate your booty and then got up and went home. He so, is a white boy. Well, I do have I do have female friends like Claudia said. I gotta I gotta I gotta agree with Claudia when she's right now. I have female friends who say that that they let men come over and that's all they do. And they leave and don't give them none. You can get over that happens a lot with the Caucasian fellas. They seem to be wanting to do all that and that's it. Let me just make you feel good and then they leave. Okay, well, if y'all like it, I love it, but it couldn't be me. All right, we have an update on the Jonathan Majors assault case. According to recent reports, Jonathan admitted to physically attacking his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, in a series of text messages that were released during his trial. The messages stated, they will ask you questions, and as I don't think you actually protect us, it could lead to an investigation, even if you do lie and they suspect something. Do you believe those messages were a dead giveaway or not? Q? Yeah, it was a dead giveaway. And I know y'all gonna get mad at me for making this about making good, and I don't give a <laughs> I wanna know what the hell making good was thinking and what was going through her mind and she's sitting up in there in a domestic violence trial for her man as she's reading text messages about how he whooped this lady ass and was urging her not to go to the hospital. Like, I wonder, do you sit there and be like, oh, girl, am I in too deep? Or, you know, this could be me. I don't know. Um, Megan Good aside, I just did that because y'all was mad last week. Megan Good aside, um... I'm starting to believe every single word they said about Jonathan Major in terms of him whooping these people ass. Like, come on, y'all. Let's just go ahead and call it. We know this one just like we knew OJ killed them damn people. That man is whooping these people ass. It's, it's pretty cut and dry for me. All right. Al, what do you think? Well, you know what? I hope they wrap this trial up by the end of the year because I would like to add those two including Megan, to the list of people I don't want to hear about in 2024. I don't want to hear about Jonathan. I don't want to hear about Jabari. And I don't want to hear about Megan. Now, though, Q, even though this was damaging, the prosecutors did get two wins on Friday. The two um, witnesses that they called to the stand was the chauffeur, who they thought he was going to say that he saw Jonathan hustling and tussling with her. And he actually said he saw the tussle but he didn't see the injuries. And that was very damaging for um, 
for the team, for for the Jabari's team. And they also called to the witness Jabari's drinking buddy, who she called a confidant. And the confidant said after the cross-examination that, okay, he can only say what he was told from Jabari instead of witnessing it the night of the incident. So I don't know, Q. I think that the I think that Indian lawyer that uh, Jonathan's got the money is worth it because he's still at 50 50 right now. And remember, he's only got to convince one jury member that nothing really happened out of the ordinary. Damn, Angela Elaine said Megan got her fee and made her appearance. I don't agree with that. And Desiree Smith said Jonathan gonna be doing chubby movies when it's all said and done. What do you think? <laughs> yes, no. You think he's gonna get work after this? Tell him, Claudia, you not you, for a while. You know, Toomey movies. Not, yeah, he's, he's, not get, he, he's not gonna get no work for a while. I don't see you know, the, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Like you, you, you he's not gonna get those Marvel calls, he's not gonna get those big budget blockbuster calls for a while. He may have to do some independent or do some of those BET era bass films from the nineties. That's the little yang 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 round over there. Go play with go play with Tyler. Play. Go little play with Tyler play. Perry for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, come back in a few years. Miss Mary Macadosha said he always looked guilty like a slave that got caught. What the hell? He does be having a crazy look. Listen. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not surprised. All right, coming up next, a white man is behind bars due to harassment. And later, Snoop Dogg opens up about his fin about financial hardships. Stay tuned. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. McMillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, you're having a great night at Disney World's Epcot. You've been How you going to ban black history? Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TGIF. Okay, soulmates, I see y'all. Yes, my lashes, they get fixed tomorrow. I'm not doing it today. <laughs> they will remind me. Like, I they can't... pick up on everything. What's wrong with your lashes? I need a fill, so I got some on this side, but this side is thin. But I get them done tomorrow, and I was like, put do, fake lashes on. Do you want to know what's so funny? Me and my friend James Knox have this conversation all the time. I do not notice people's fingernails, toenails, eyelashes or eyebrows. I just don't notice those things on people. Oh, for some reason, like when it comes to me, it's like every little, little one piece of hair, I got to hear about it. And I'm like, I'm not here for my looks. I'm here for my commentary. Wait Thank a minute, Claudia. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Because you get, you're beautiful. You're lovely. Your hair is amazing. Your face is nice. Mm -hmm. You get a ton of freaking compliments in that chat 
all the time. I do, they but like they also come top, from my- They like your hair, they like I, your face. I, I do, but I also get a lot of, uh, I'm the most criticized when it comes to looks. Like if you have a weird shirt on or or something going on, they don't really say that much. But for me, I don't know what the hell, listen, man, I ain't perfect and I'll probably have bad lashes several more times. <laughs> and yes, the, uh, I, they, they'll be done tomorrow, y'all. Okay, y'all happy? Okay. Jesus Christ, it's so many comments. All right, a white man in New Jersey has been sentenced to eight years uh, in prison for harassing his black neighbors. Check this out. No, and you wanna know where I was when all this happened? I don't care. At work, monkey. I don't care where you were. At work. Just uh, like I told the Mount Laurel police, get these monkeys out of here and you can't do The man even went as far as to throw feces on some of their properties. Thankfully, the judge sentenced him to eight years in prison with a mandatory time of four years being served. Look at him. What are your thoughts on this sad situation? Alice, go to you first. It took too long. He has a long rap sheet of harassing people. He also has a long rap sheet of impersonating law enforcement as well as burglary. I'm glad they finally got him. We did this story two years ago. I don't know if you guys remember. And I'm very happy that we are given an update on this. And I'm also very happy that the judge gave a mandatory amount of time that he cannot get out or apply to an early release. I really like that part. To me, I don't think it's long enough, but you know what, we'll take four years. Now, the best part of this is the reason why we got him was because of social media and people started filming him. And I think it was the neighbors that were being harassed. Thank goodness for social media. We're starting to see that social media is holding people who usually never have to take accountability and think they're bigger than the law to social justice. And I'm a big fan of that. And it was because of social media that this guy now will be guaranteed to be in prison for four years for harassing and talking racism and racist slurs towards us black people. That's the longest sentence I've ever heard for just harassment without actual physical, like uh, we have police officers that murder black people that get out for less time for that. So I'm amazed. Q, what do you think? You know, I have a rule and I want soulmates, I want y'all to probably adopt this mentality as we get ready to come into this new election season with Trump. I just don't let racist people upset me anymore, right? Like think about how delusional you have to be to believe that on the random chance that you just happen to be born to white parents, that you are actually better than someone. That is, if that's not mental illness at its finest, and I cannot bring myself to be upset with people who are damn mentally ill. That's number one. Number two, the, the curious side of me, I want to sit down with this guy right now and just ask him, was it worth it? Like, instead of just drawing your damn blinds to close that day and looking at an old episode of God and Light with Reva Shane and Josh Dem, you decided to just come out your house and do all of this, and you got eight years in jail. Monique says something on her prison comedy special. She says, I'm never going to judge any of the ladies in here because we're all one bad decision away from being in prison. Mm -hmm. You were one bad decision away from being in jail. All you had to do was draw your blinds and take your big ass back in your house. But you came outside and harassed these people. And now you have got to be the world's dumbest criminal because you are going to jail potentially for eight years for coming and stirring up some shit when you could have just stayed in the house. Bully said it's about time uh, they get some serious jail time for har harassing black people just for existing. And for Tay Baskin said the judge was black and he had other drug charges. You know, um, I always think about like the upbringing, you know what I mean? Like the, the household you were in when you were growing up. My mother is white, my dad is black, but my mom was from Southern Italy where they are very much discriminated against from a, a, the lighter skin, uh, Northern Italianers, right? And like, she was never encouraging us to like hate on anybody else or be negative to anybody else be based on stuff like that, their color, their skin, none of that stuff, right? And I just think about the neighbors that we had that had these young kids and their moms, their parents were such white trash and they were like instilling them early on that they're so much better that we're terrible people and then you grow up to be an adult like this. Like, 
when are you parents going to stop this? Because you're just getting, you're setting your kids up for disaster and for, for failure. You know what I mean? They're going to get their ass whooped. And now you see the law is trying to take this stuff seriously. And you're making a, your kid a loser. He's a loser. Whether he got convicted of this or not, he's a loser. Imagine going around in the sight of black people irritates you so much that you got to say something and talk trash and harass them. You're a loser ass person. You're a bum. So I don't know. All the good tea said it's the Trumpers feeling comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have been, but um, see how that works out for them. All right. Blueface is claiming that he is not the father of Krishan Rock's baby after he allegedly took a secret DNA test that he has not shared with us. Blueface tweeted, tell me why I snook a swab of this baby's DNA test results. It came in. I'm not the father. Shaking my head. It's a bittersweet feeling because I was coming around to it. But definitely in my best interest. Thank you, Jesus. Are you surprised? Q. I mean, are we sure it's the truth? He lied uh, a lot. You know, the, the way Krishan was so crazy over this guy, it's hard for me to believe that she was out there laying it low and spreading it wide with somebody else. Um, but if it is true, and this is some serious tea, uh, but I'm still tired of them, Claudia. Can you call Lemmy over to Azus <laughs> and just tell him to, to do something with them? This is all Lemmy's fault. Lemmy, you made these people. They and just gave Blueface another show, too. It's, I, and I just saw he, and Blueface just got another damn show. And then the mama got one. I'm mm -hmm. surprised Carlissa ain't came out um, yet. You know what? At this point, Hell, if I can't beat them, I'm going to join them. So I guess I'm just going to join the Krishan and Blueface Circus because I, I can't beat them at this point. Actually, I, I hope it is true because I think if the baby isn't his, it might have a chance. And that's a damn shame to think that she's the lesser. <laughs> I don't know who the lesser of two evil is, but he put his kid's penis on the internet. At least Krishan would ever do that. I don't know who to believe. I don't. I think Blueface is, cannot hold water. And if he had, for real, a test that would make her look stupid, he's definitely posting it. He's like a stunt queen all day long online. Uh, Al, what do you think? You know what? This is another group of individuals that they can wrap this shit up in 2021, 23. You got 21 days, guys. I honestly could do without them in 2024. I know you guys said they have a show, but promise you I won't be watching it. But I will say this. I'll give you 21 days, but there are two things that I must know. I need to know who the baby daddy is, if it's not Blueface, and you two can ignore what I said last time, but I know our daggone soulmates wanna know, and soulmates, if you wanna know, put a little a thumbs up or something in the chat. Did Krishan really sleep with Offset? I need the answer. Y'all can act like y'all didn't hear me the last time if you want to, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there just as curious as I am, because Cardi B, I've seen her sad before. But I haven't seen her that sad in a long time over her, man. Did Cardi B sleep? I mean, did 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 Offset sleep with Krishan? And who is the baby daddy? Y'all got 21 days before I have to put you in the do not talk about list. If you remember that on the show, um, in Sag Sagittarius Goodness, a goddess said, but there was already a DNA test and it said the baby is his. So I think- I don't remember that. Yeah, she did one already. And he had a- uh, I think he's mad that she got a new man and she got his tattoo taken off and got the new man put on her wrist, which I think was dumb. And I am sick of them both. So we're going to move on. Speaking of fighting, <laughs> y'all fans are doing the absolute most at these concerts. During Tayana Taylor's recent performance, a fight broke out in the audience and her daughter, Junie, grabbed the microphone to defuse the situation. This girl has so much personality. Take a look. Kid, <laughs> what do you think about this? What did she say at first? I couldn't make out what she said the first go around. I couldn't understand I don't know, but gonna she was chastising. Gonna be sassy or something you can get out. Okay, she was chastising the crowd. I think it's cute. You know, Tiana Taylor and her family can do no wrong in my book. Even going through this divorce, I ain't, I was I was mad with uh, Iman for for last week. I ain't even mad with him no more. They're just a group, a black family that I love. And I think Judy is so sweet. I thought that this was really cute. All right, Al, what do you think? 
Uh, I, I know I'm gonna get backlash for this, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It scared me, actually. It scares me to see a young person like that on stage because we see how people throw stuff up on stage. They're very rude and disrespectful, not only to the artist, but can you imagine how they may be towards a little girl? I just felt like, it, it, to me, it just felt unsafe. I didn't like it, sorry. Because what if somebody had thrown a bottle and hit that girl in the head for talking back to them and they just were in a fight? It could happen because there's no mechanism in place to stop it. And then it would have been an all, you know, full on brawl. And I just felt like that, that, that scared me. So some people are trying to say, leave your kid at home, but and yeah. some people are saying too grown. She's definitely grown, but I, I would expect nothing else from Tiana's uh, off, you know, spring because she has so much personality. Thank God that nothing did happen to little Junie, but um, I think she, I think we're going to be seeing that girl in uh, the entertainment business. She gets over. Mm -hmm. Um, African Melon said that was cute. She was serious too. Hashtag baby girl. All right. Coming up next, a Florida woman burnt her Tinder date and later Snoop Dogg opens up about financial hardships. Keep a lot. Stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. Macmillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida, right? <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World, Epcot. You've been to Disney World. Black History. Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. I don't want to jump you, but you don't even qualify to speak on this. So fucking good. TGIF, live and interactive. I need to clear this up, y'all. You are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook. Al has been to my house. I can cook. I'm going to test you out right here. What are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens? Turkey next. Oh. Don't do me. <laughs> on Fox Soul. Don't you do me. <laughs> don't try it. Welcome back to TGIF. Somebody's got a pop in the chat. We up to almost 7,000 people tonight. We hey, are, hey. Bro, we got to get that 10,000. All right, y'all, let's get into this. You know, we always try to bring you some tips to make your life easier. Every year, we all pledge to save more and spend less. But how are you supposed to save when you're paying inflated prices for everyday essentials like gas and groceries? You can't just cut those purchases out of your budget. But now... Thanks to our 2023 money back hack, you can get cash back from them with Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. Now with Upside, I get cash back on every purchase. It's my secret weapon for staying on track with my savings goals. Um, Upside offsets inflated prices by giving you cash back on purchases. And this is definitely something that can help. Listen, every little penny counts at the, these times. And if you can save a little bit of money on gas or groceries, I say you go for it. Funky, when and where do you use Upside? I know the, I think Florida is one of the most expensive places for rent now. I'm yeah, like, well, you know, the cost of living and the cost of living in Florida is, is is through the roof. So I'm always glad. And I always mention this, guys. I know it's getting redundant. You get these little push notifications. You just be minding your little old business driving. You get these little notifications on your phone that tells you <coughs> the area of a gas station where you can get uh, money off to get your gas. And 
every time I get it, I look at my tank and I just so happen to need gas and I pull my behind right under the gas station and use my upside app to just try to keep a little extra coins in my pockets. I keep going to my little richer fancy dinners. So, you know, a little money save ain't never hurt nobody. I recommend you guys do get the upside because I use it for the gas component. All right. And Al, how easy is the app for you to use? Oh, uh, you know, a good thing that I like about the app, because I don't drive, so I don't get to take advantage of the gas stuff. But the thing I like about it is when I go to a new city, because you guys know I travel a lot and I'm, a, I'm in a lot of different cities, I'm able to use the app to figure out what city I'm in. They've already reviewed the place. It gives me confidence to not only go to the place, but know that when I spend there, they're going to pay me back a certain portion and I can have that put in my account to pay for other things. So that's the thing I like about upside. In the chat, I'm looking at the chat, Bonita1922 uh, says, has anyone in the chat used it? I'd like to see your answers in the chat. I know people do use the things we talk about on the show. I would love to see some thumbs up if you've used the app. All right, fellas, what do you plan to do with all your cash back? Well, Q, you said already, you like to spend it on your fancy dinners, right? Mm -hmm. And Al? uh spend it <laughs> <laughs> all right to get started download the free upside app use promo code tgif and get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas next claim an offer for whatever you're buying on upside then pay as usual with the credit or debit card follow the steps in the app and get yourself paid now in comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs you can earn three times more cash back with upside Download the free Upside app and use promo code TGIF to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas using promo code TGIF. 25 cents off on it per gallon is a lot of money and I am all for it. Promotional consideration furnished by Upside. Let's get back to some more topics and uh, in the chat, go ahead and let us know if you use it. All right, in Florida news, a woman is facing a series of charges after setting her Tinder date on fire. Destiny Lene Johnson asked her Tinder date for money to fix her car and started yelling, you guys are out to get me, before pouring the gasoline on the passenger side of his SUV, lighting the inside of the car on fire with the lighter. What are your thoughts on this crazy story, Al? Go ahead. Sounds like Tinder and sex work to me, baby. This sounds like prostitution gone wrong. I'm sorry. You can be mad at me. I said That's it. That's what I was going to say. Because it happens. And she said, not today. Yeah. I done, mm hmm yo, little, little, mm hmm And I need my money. And he tried to play games, and she said, okay, you play too long. So she put the alcohol in the chair and lit that car on fire. Next time, you got to be careful because people hide behind those profiles on the internet or URL, whatever the heck they are, and they play games. And she said, not today. She said, not today. P -p Production, put that picture back up there. She's way too pretty. That's not, that's a, that's a pretty woman right there. She said, not today. And I can imagine what that dude looked like. Now, if, if this, this is allegedly, we don't know that she's a hooker, but if she is, I don't, I never said, like, if I was a hook and I was going to rock the mic, I would want the money up front. Like, what's to stop you from, like, not paying me after it's done? I fuck you, what you think about this? Well, it was definitely prostitution. I saw through that ten, ten the day, girl, back page date, 79th Street <laughs> date, Walker <laughs> Boulevard date. That, that was given. They hunched in that car. They hunched in the car. And he wasn't ready to pay her, trying to drop out. And she said she wasn't getting out without her money. And he said he ain't having it. She said, well, if I ain't getting out with my money, you ain't getting out this car. <laughs> and she lit his ass on fire. And I don't blame her. Let me tell you something. First of all, it's already low when people have to resort to prostitution to survive, right? Because no little girl grows up and says, hey, when I grow up, I want to sell coochie. Nobody does that. So for somebody to have to degrade themselves and reduce themselves to prostitution and then did, did not even get paid for it, nah, baby, I got to set the car on fire, too. All right. Sunny Lovin said she had a waiting to exhale flashback. <laughs> and Mr. D-Boy Sexy said, Maddie say you're supposed to collect your money at the door. All right. 
Listen, that response, Claudia, is almost like you've done this to me before and I'm not having it this time. That's what I felt like. Cause you know, the first time he tried to say he ain't got the money, you you might give him a slide, you might give him a pass. But I feel like she was like, nah, you've been playing games with me too many times. Your, your money's always short. Your little penguin arms gotta go, to, nope, nope. Either you pay me, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna let set it on fire. She set it on fire. Well, all right, we wish her the best. All right, keep it locked because coming up next, Snoop Dogg gets candid about his past finances. And later, we are playing a fun Christmas game. Keep it locked. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. jump you but you don't even qualify to speak on yourself <laughs> <laughs> I can clip TGIF live and interactive I need to clear this up y'all you are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook Al has been in my house I can cook I'm gonna test you out right here what are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens turkey necks oh yeah. don't do me <laughs> on Fox Soul don't you do me <laughs> don't try it <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, during a recent interview with the uh, Business Untitled podcast, Snoop Dogg revealed that he almost filed for bankruptcy, but his pride stopped him from doing so. Snoop said, there were times in my career where it got so bad, my accountant was like, we should just do bankruptcy. My pride got involved. Bleep that. If I say bankruptcy, then I look like I bleeped off everything. What do you thought of Snoop revealing those details about his financial hardships, Al? I, you know what? This is this is very positive. You know, guys, I've, I've worked in banking for 10 years. It's a private banker for a lot of wealthy people. And it's OK, because a lot of wealthy people use it as a strategy to hit the restart button. I'm glad that it comes from Snoop Dogg, though, because Snoop Dogg is a recognized icon in the in our community. And if he can talk about it, it shines light on it. But listen, Martha Stewart, fired for bankruptcy. She was a part of a team that I managed. Uh, Mike Tyson, fired for bank, filed for bankruptcy. George Foreman, filed for bankruptcy. 50 Cent, filed for bankruptcy. Donald Trump filed for bankruptcy. So bankruptcy is not like an end-all be-all. And if you really understand it, for the very wealthy, it is almost like a restart. And it doesn't have to always be negative because you can structure it in so many ways nowadays to just relieve you of the over your head feeling that most people have to feel like they have to file for bankruptcy. I commend him, him, someone like him speaking into this space, just like Byron Allen over the weekend spoke into the space. And he said, listen, my houses went into foreclosure 14 times before I became a millionaire. I just want everybody to let that sink in. So the fact that you have to explore bankruptcy clearly doesn't mean that it's over. Listen and look at all the people that I named for you. Their lives are examples for us now. You too can be an example and still have gone through bankruptcy. 
All right, uh, Q, what do you think about this? And you know what? Y'all around here, to, all these rich people filing bankruptcy, and y'all wonder why that lady in that other story out there selling coochie. I got to clear something up, y'all. I said, you know, we all know she's a prostitute. I just want to make it known that that's my opinion, that she may have been a prostitute doing prostitution or, or filing bankruptcy, whatever the hell she had going on in that car. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, to Al's point, you said it right, but you know, you know, Snoop did say one thing. He said, uh, there, there was a portion I'm paraphrasing here. He was like, you know, I'm black. He was like, you know, that works for other people, but I'm black. And you know what? There is there there can sometimes be some social and business repercussions when people think you're bankrupt, especially when you're black. And I don't know when in his career this was, but to Al's point, if they were the random numbers and it looked like it would have helped my finances to have filed the bankruptcy, then I just would have had to look bad and I would have filed the bankruptcy. Look, I I've thought about it. I'll be transparent. I've thought about it. There, there was a point in my career where I was like, okay, I've been praying. I've been, I've been <laughs> knuckles of white. What should we do? And I actually thought about bankruptcy and what he said made a lot of sense because a lot of people will look at you sideways, but you have to take the emotions out of it. You have to take the ego out of it and you have to do what makes the most sense for you and your family. That's all I got to say. And we do need financial literacy and we do need financial education so that we can teach people their options so they're not out here robbing, stealing, prostituting, because there are better options in some cases. Um, I filed bankruptcy before. And I was about to say that um, I think that it's horrible that they make it a public record because in this day and age, a lot of uneducated people about exactly what bankruptcy is, they will clown you and use it against you to humiliate you. Um, I did it before I did Celebrity Apprentice and then Omarosa and I got into it on the show. And of course she dropped that on the show uh, as a way to embarrass me, which I thought was stupid because we're sitting in front of Donald Trump who'd filed bankruptcy about what, four times? Right, Two or five times. <laughs> I, had, um, got a, I had two homes at the time. I had a million dollars in real estate that I bought by myself. And then my rates adjusted. I had an adjustable loan, which I realized later on, we all found out the hard ways was part of predatory lending to minorities. They would go after us and say, hey, you can you know, get this $600,000 home. You can get two homes actually. And your payment will be $2,500. And then in small, small print. And then after 24 months, it's going to balloon to $4,500 each one. And that's what happened to me. My show got canceled. And then I went from making this much money to $0. And I had to file bankruptcy and get it together. Um, it was horrible. It was embarrassing. Um, I, I felt like a failure, but you know, it's nothing. It's a way to restructure your life. I got it back together now. And now I'm in a beautiful house. I have more money now than I had then. And I made good on everything. So it, it, it was a way. And you to got a $10,000 door. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, you know, it, it, it was a, a means to get me out of that and to not be stuck there. Um, and I think more people need to look into it as an option and it shouldn't be such an embarrassing thing. Uh, plenty of our white counterparts use it. We're just not as educated about it. And we tend to think it's, she broke, he ain't got no money. That's not true. That's Your not debt true. is just higher than what you got, go your assets. And you, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to get out of it. All right, Jada Pinkett Smith recently told the Daily Mail that Will's infamous snap at the Oscars party saved her marriage. Jada said, after all these years trying to figure out if I would leave Will's side, it took the slap. For me to see, I will never leave him. Who knows where our relationship would be if that hadn't happened? Funky, go ahead. I'm I'm tired. I'm tired. Can y'all please go buy this bald headed lady book? But <laughs> so she could leave us alone. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm, I'm tired. I ain't even got no voice. I'm tired. I just. <laughs> Your first the marriage was on the fritz. Then you moved out, then you got an arrangement, then you might have left, but now the slap made you realize you never leave. You still, you revealing lately that Tupac had alopecia. Can y'all please buy this? <laughs> Can y'all please buy this lady book so she could get off my line, please? Al, um, you, you know what? You know book? what? Uh, Hold on. We said, we said Tamar and JR. We said Jonathan Majors, Jabari, uh, and what's Major. that girl? 
Yeah, we said blue Rashawn. and Krishan. Can we please add Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith? Sorry, love you guys. You have been an icon for me for many, many years. Please take me out the group chat. I am done. I am done. You got 21 days to tell me what else you want me to know, and I will listen. I do not want to hear anything else about this couple, about their battle with their with their marriage. The crazy kids. Take <laughs> me out of the group chat. It's at this point, I promise you, all the people that I put on the list, if you continue to be on my feed, I'm gonna charge you for abuse. It's mental abuse on me, and I don't want it anymore. I'm glad you're healing. I'm glad this is what it took for you guys to get back together after eight years apart. I'm glad. Go celebrate somewhere else. Just take it out of the group chat, please. I'm done. I'm done. I'm over it. And I love you guys. I wish you the best. But please take me out of the group chat. Will said it was so hard to make this woman happy. Like he's tried everything and it's like, it's so hard to make her happy. And I, I, I'm on, I, I feel you, Will. I, it's a slap, like you million dollar parties, all this other stuff. But it's the slap that made her realize that she didn't want to leave you. I'll be so pissed off if I was him. I gotta get I'm my ass. Who I, yeah, I gotta that slap. You? I gotta assault somebody on stage. You, who says that lot? I was tired. I was tired. That's from the uh, color purple, ain't it? I was tired. Ain't it the color purple? I was tired of hearing about all. All right, let's go to break. Coming up, we are playing a fun Christmas game of name that co-star. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. stories that we're going to cover come from around the world, around the country. Some of them will warm your heart. Some of them will make you good and mad. McMillan and Mara. There's been an uptick in fights at Disney World. That's because it's hard to be happy in Florida right now. <laughs> Every Thursday night. Yeah, and you're having a great night at Disney World's Epcot. You're going to ban black history. Here are people go through 400 years of suffering and work themselves to the place where they can become the leader of the free world. That ain't no educational value. I'm fired up. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect Welcome back to the show. All right, y'all, in honor of the holiday season, we are going to test your knowledge in a festive Christmas game called Name That Co-Star. All right, I'm going to ask a series of trivia questions featuring the main characters of the film, and you guys will tell me which actor starred in them. Are y'all ready? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's cue the music. First up, which actor did Whitney Houston star alongside in the film The Preacher's Wife? Courtney B. Vance, Lawrence Fishburne, Samuel Jackson. Courtney. Hey, Courtney B. Vance. All right, that is correct, I believe, yes. Okay, Terrence Howard starred alongside which actress in the film The Best Man Holiday? Tatiana Ali, Nia Long, Kerry Washington. Nia. Nia Long. All right, let's see the answer. Nia Long. Loretta Devine starred alongside which R&B star in this hit 
film this Christmas, Trevor Jackson, Chris Brown, Jacob Lattimore. Uh, um, B, yeah, Chris no, Brown. Not be Chris. Right. Which actress did Morris Chestnut star alongside in the film The Perfect Holiday? Vivica A. Fox, Sanaa Latham, Gabrielle Union. I think C, Gabrielle Union. I don't know that one. Sorry. Uh, I'll go with Q, whatever Q said. Gabrielle Union. Yeah, they did a lot of movies together. Yeah. Uh, Danny Glover starred alongside which Academy Award winning actress in the film Almost Christmas? A, Monique. Gotta be Monique. B, Halle Berry. C, Jennifer Hudson. A, Monique. Monique, all right. That was fun. Y'all nailed that one. Got them all right. All right. Let's get back to some topics. The soulmates we see, they going hard in the chat, like just throwing all the answers. All right. Soulmates, our good brother Plies has a question for the ladies out there. Take a look. I can't mentally, ladies, make myself believe that a woman, all her friends can be hoes and she hang with them all the time. <laughs> And she ain't no but ain't no way as a woman you should want to be around hoes. All right, does he have a point? What do y'all think? You know better than we do. Shit, what you think? Well, y'all be speaking on women so much, so y'all can go get quiet now. You hang, you know, the, some of the people Ooh. you hang with, you know better than we. Ooh. You ain't talking. <laughs> you know better. You know better. Take it away, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hang with you guys and I don't do the things y'all do so it is possible to hang or be friends or work with people that you don't do <laughs> stuff like them <laughs> Al can you mute yourself please it's <laughs> really you're getting on my goddamn nerves like you laughing well you get on my nerves too sometimes well you're so through. loud no one can hear anything okay you know, well good that's what because... they say in the chat too but we're gonna get through this Keep okay going. well let me answer then okay okay answer okay drink drink some water I um, will you after can, I'm um, done Shut up, Al, please. Mm -hmm. Let me answer the question here. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you hang with people that are not like you? Yeah, you can, because opposites attract. But if it's too out of control and ridiculous, mm -hmm. then you're probably not going to be attracted to that behavior. So mm -hmm. do y'all speak on it? Do you want to answer? Um, you know, I, I, I think there are rare occasions where you can be just completely doing something different than your friend group. But nine times out of 10, people tend to bond because they have the same worldview, the same attitudes, behaviors, and outlooks on things. So it is not far-fetched to believe that, you know, if, if it's three of y'all, three people in the group hoeing, that the fourth friend ain't a hoe either. Because <laughs> why, why is you there? Because if you're not a hoe, you would be turned off by them. That's right. I agree with that. I had a girl that was, uh, she was cool to hang with on the surface but when I got to really know her and see some grimy stuff she did, I had to stop rocking with her because it was feeling like a cosign mm -hmm. for her business. And I saw her screw a guy in a hotel, then go to an event, and then uh, be up in another woman's face right after that. Uh, Al, do you want to answer this or no? Oh, can I talk? You've been talking all night, a lot. Oh, excellent. So okay, so I can talk. Excellent. I, you know what? There's a part of me that's just like, come on. It, not really, but there's a part of it that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's why we're talking about it because it resonates with us. But I got to be honest, I kind of like hoes. I kind of like living vicariously through hoes. Hoes kind of feed my energy because I'm a Gemini, so I like both sides of it. So I ain't mad at the comment because the comment makes a lot of sense. But the other side of that is that I kind of like hanging with hoes. Hose feeds a side of me that I don't get to do myself so I can live vicariously through them. And that makes my life whole. All right. But well, which friends do you hang out with that we've known past or present as hoes? Himself. I'm going to play the fifth cue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got about 45, 50 seconds. Left, so. You want to press some more cue? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I know some of them hoes I hang out with, but I just don't want to start no stuff today because it's Monday. If it was later in the week and I felt like 
we we wouldn't have a week worth of news. Right. Oh, we had a with week it. worth of attitude. I'll just revisit this question on Friday show. All right. Then, well, then the host can have a weekend to get over it. <laughs> I'm right. with you. I'm with you. I want to thank my co host Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Make sure you watch the repeat tomorrow and hit that like button. Get those like buttons up. And thank you so much. All right, y'all. Don't y'all want to know if Prashawn slept with that boy Offset? I know y'all are nosy. Go to bed, Al. Please. <laughs>